vote on aid to Ukraine in US Congress may be postponed for several weeks. The House of Representatives' vote on aid to Ukraine is unlikely to happen until at least mid-April and possibly later as Speaker Mike Johnson is still seeking ways to soften opposition from radical Republicans. Bloomberg reported this, citing the leader of the Republican Party in the House of Representatives. They say that Johnson's team has not shared a detailed plan regarding the aid package with Republican lawmakers and it seems undecided on the actions he will insist on from President Joe Biden's administration, making it difficult for him to secure support in time for a vote next week. Johnson's spokeswoman, Taylor Halsey, stated that the Speaker's promise of swift action did not intend to establish a specific deadline and that Johnson was sounding out members. Regarding the plan, she did not provide further information on the Speaker's consultations. Two representatives of the Republican leadership stated that there is still a possibility that Johnson could decide regarding the Ukraine aid plan over the weekend and expedite the project's approval next week. However, Bloomberg notes that such an accelerated schedule could lead to the bill's failure and further confrontation with hardline supporters within the Republican Party. Recently, the administration of the U.S. President refused to accede to the proposal of the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Mike Johnson, to provide aid to Ukraine if the President reverses his decision to suspend the issuance of new licenses for liquefied natural gas exports. The U.S. Congress's approval of over 60 billion U.S. dollars in aid to Ukraine is currently being blocked by Republicans in the House of Representatives. The White House has repeatedly cautioned that this would significantly harm Ukraine's military efforts on the battlefield. U.S. warns China against any attempts to help Russia in its war against Ukraine. The United States remains concerned about the strengthening of cooperation between Moscow and Beijing and is against any steps by China that could help support Russia's aggression in Ukraine. U.S. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller said this at a briefing in Washington. We have made it very clear that we don't want to see China do anything to help support Russia's aggression in Ukraine and we will continue to make that clear, he said. Commenting on a planned summit meeting between the Russian and Chinese leaders, Miller also added that the United States remains concerned about the full-scale partnership between Moscow and Beijing. Kremlin leader Vladimir Putin plans to visit China in May to hold talks with Chinese President Xi Jinping. China should reason with Russia about the war in Ukraine, said French Foreign Minister Stéphane Séjourné in Beijing. The Chinese government plays a key role in the respect of international law, including on Ukraine's sovereignty, and therefore, we are clearly expecting that China will send very clear messages to Russia, Sejourné said during a press conference in the Chinese capital speaking alongside his Chinese counterpart, Wang Yi. China presents itself as neutral on the Ukraine war and hasn't formally condemned Russia for the invasion. Instead, Beijing has deepened ties with Moscow, even deciding to ditch the United States dollar for bilateral trade. Last month, China's special envoy for Eurasian affairs warned about the war escalating and said both Ukraine and Russia agree that negotiations rather than guns will ultimately end this war. China wants Europe to let Russia sit at the table for future peace talks or Beijing will boycott such discussions. Russia's new railway in occupied territories may pose serious problem Ukraine warns. Ukraine's defense intelligence chief believes that the railway being built by the Russians on Ukrainian territory and connecting it with mainland Russia could be a problem, but he assumes that Ukraine will cope with it. Kirill Budinov, head of Ukraine's defense intelligence, said this. In fact, Russia has been building a railway to connect their own territory with our southern temporarily occupied territories for more than a year now. This process is almost complete and it could pose a serious problem for us. But I hope that we will somehow manage the land section of the railway. Everyone has experience in this and this is much easier than the Crimean bridge issue. Budanov added, earlier UK Defence Intelligence reported that the Russians repaired the railway in Donetsk Oblast. 
UK intelligence examined the situation surrounding Russia's construction of a railway line through the temporarily occupied territories of Ukraine. Observers noted that on the 18th of March, Kremlin leader Vladimir Putin mentioned the construction of a railway line from Rostov-on-Don in southern Russia to Ukraine's temporarily occupied territories through Crimea. According to Putin, the new line will eventually reach Sevastopol and is intended to provide redundancy for the Kirsch Bridge. Putin also stated that the first completed section of the railway has restored access to Berdyansk. This railway connection runs through territory that could be targeted by Ukrainian high-precision long-range systems. The new railway line, south of Donetsk, is nearly 60 kilometers long and was constructed in eight months. The UK Ministry of Defense stated that it is almost certainly one of Russia's largest infrastructure projects in Ukraine's temporarily occupied territories. The constructed branch resumes railway communication disrupted by hostilities in Donetsk Oblast. The new line's primary purpose is likely to support Russian activity in Mariupol. This port city, destroyed by Russia in 2022, houses the Azovstal metallurgic plant and other heavy industry facilities which, while severely damaged, Russia may attempt to repair and operate in the future, the analysts noted.